Hi everyone, I'm Armazir and welcome to Phantom Doctrine. So, Phantom Doctrine is an XCOM style game, except without aliens. At least as far as I'm aware, <laughs> roll X-Files music. Anyway, the game is set in the year 1983, during the Cold War, and you basically control a spy network. You're the leader of a secret organization, and your goal is to prevent a global conspiracy that seeks to pit nations against each other. You can play as either a former KGB counterintelligence operative, or as a renegade CIA commando. And once you finish the campaign, you can unlock a third protagonist in an extended playthrough. So, without further ado, let's jump into the game, shall we? Now, thanks to the developer, I got a save game with a mission slightly further into the campaign that I can show you. So, we will be jumping straight into the action. But first, we'll go through the tutorial, because it's pretty short and it shows some of the basics of the game. And yeah, here's the extended campaign I was talking about. You have to unlock it by finishing the game first. We got three different difficulty levels. We got easy, we got medium, and we got hard. We can disable the tutorial if we want to. We also got Iron Man mode, and we can control the subtitles. We'll go with medium, and here we can choose the protagonist. We can either choose the CIA background or KGB background. And once we finish the campaign for the first time, we unlock an additional background for an extended playthrough. So let's go with KGB, because why not? It doesn't really have any effect on the tutorial, by the way. So this won't really make a difference for the purpose of this particular video. And we can customize our character. So we can name him if we want to. We can choose our own name. We can choose the portrait, or in this case, the passport photo. So this guy looks good to me. He can be Dmitry Popov. And then we can also do a lot of customization. I won't be doing that too much, but I can show you some of the options that are available. So we can choose eyewear, attachments. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> yep. Okay, yep, that looks good to me. Hat. Let's see. That looks good. <laughs> looks classy. We can change clothes. So, different shirts, jacket, polo and leather, vest. Yeah, there are quite a few options in here, so we can choose whatever you like. Let's go with the suit jacket. We can change the pants. We can have some gloves, leather gloves. We can change the shoes. We can change hair. In this case, it doesn't really matter because we got a hat. Here. He can be bald, that's fine. We can change his physique. Athletic is fine. We can choose a different face preset. There are some details here. He can have some scars. Tattoos. You can't really see those. <laughs> they are covered. All right then, so let's get started, shall we? Yankee Juliet uniform. Reporting contraband seized. Understood. Break off patrol. Head back to base. Tavarish, HMS Conqueror Narushal Radio Malchani. Sto? Показать расшифровку. А быстрее. Немедленно послать в Москву. Немедленно. We got intel from Vladivostok. It's big, Steve. Langley seen it yet? No. Should they? Hell yeah, but use the network. We don't want anyone listening in. 
First the British, and now the Americans. Was there anyone else you wanted to involve in our plans? I am handling it, Valhalla. Get out. Both of you. Your incompetence has exposed us. Now Iceberg is in jeopardy. Doing all of this in the open was your idea. True. It was a simple plan that any fool could have executed. And you failed. Gentlemen, this problem is easily solved. Traitors! Now, now, don't shout. It's bad for your heart. You know what's also bad for your heart? This. <laughs> Right, so that's the intro, and now we'll be doing the tutorial, which shows some of the basics of the tactical part of the game at least, because there's also an extensive strategic layer, and you will be spending quite a lot of time on that one. I hope you have a good reason for pulling me off that RAF gig. Absolutely. This operation is crucial to Project Iceberg. Why are you even talking to me? You're taking an awful risk. Nonsense. They may be expecting defectors, but not the kind of hardware you're carrying. Ihre Papiere, bitte. Here are your papers. <laughs> yep, that's a lot of hardware, all right. So, here we are. This is the infiltration phase. In infiltration stage, guards will only react if you do something suspicious. Alright, we'll move a little bit closer. And here we got the restricted zone, which the tutorial will talk about. Most actions cost action points, APs. Some actions, especially combat related, also cost fire points. Phantom Doctrine is a turn-based game. So when all your agent's points are depleted, you end your turn. So the blue points are movement points, the orange one is a fire point. You can, for example, move by using one point, then fire, and then move again. So it's kind of like in XCOM, but not entirely, in the sense that shooting does not end your turn. It's a completely separate action point, which is independent of the movement points. There are some actions that use both movement point and fire point, but let's not get ahead of ourselves too much. So now we will go closer to the restricted zone. They won't care about us as long as we're outside of the red zone in here. And skip the rest of our turn. Who is this agent Kodiak your file spoke about? Some KGB overachiever. When in restricted area, move with caution. We can rotate the camera and use any angle we want. So now we can go in and as you can see, now we are trespassing. So if they spot us, they will be alerted to our presence. Here's the camera, but we can disable it. Avoid cameras, they will trigger the alarm if you cross their cone of vision. Cameras can be disabled if you find CCTV central unit. Which, conveniently enough, is right here. Who could have seen that one coming? Deal with the security quietly. We don't want unnecessary trouble. Thank you. I can handle myself. So, now we can move on. And enter the main building. Knock, knock. Enemy agent located. This is one of our sleeper agents. Use the control phase from the abilities menu. So there it is. And as you can see, this costs one fire point. And it has a cooldown of three turns. Like I said, there are some abilities that use both the fire point and one movement point. Now we got control of Rook. A sleeper agent is safe to go anywhere. Go upstairs. Use mouse wheel to change floors. Right. And we can go up here. 
Guards can be taken down silently, provided their HP is lower than that of the attacker. We got 90, he has 35, so our abilities are down here. And we can take him down at the cost of 1 fire point and 50 awareness. Now, there will be more about awareness a little bit later, but awareness is one of the most important resources in this game. And it's this bar down here, the one below the health. And it's also the smaller bar under our health over here. We got 90 health and the smaller bar is awareness. We got 80 awareness right now and takedown will use 50. Awareness. All characters have a certain level of awareness. It is used by select actions like takedown. In combat, awareness allows agents to dodge when shot at, effectively reducing received damage. Awareness regenerates every turn and it can be raised by abilities and items. So yeah, awareness is used both for active actions, like this one, and for passive abilities like dodge. So when somebody is shooting you and you have enough awareness to dodge, you will dodge. More about that later. Combat is actually pretty interesting in this game. It's nothing like in XCOM. It's a lot less RNG based, which I quite like. So, use spotter support to lift fog of war and reveal enemies and civilians inside the indicated room. Note that support agents operate from a specific direction and must have line of sight or fire to the target to be effective. So, we can use tactical spotter right here and confirm. Here we go. Place your agents at the door and prepare for a breach attack. Off you go then. And up here. And yeah, as you can see, we got less awareness because we used some of it on takedown, but some of it already regenerated. There are some abilities that disable awareness regeneration. There's quite a lot to this game. Select the breach ability, select the marked room for attack and confirm. Breach confers a damage bonus, making it extra deadly. Yep, here we got the description. Nearby agents move into the designated area and shoot any encountered hostiles. Suppresses enemy overwatch. Requires at least two agents with firing capacity. Right mouse button on enemies to lock targets. So this room right here. And confirm. And we'll kill them both. Note that using non-suppressed weapons always triggers the alarm and starts combat. So now we ended the infiltration phase because we fired our weapons, non-suppressed weapons. And yeah, as you can see, alarm has been raised. Also, when we are in infiltration phase, enemies do not get awareness unless these are enemy agents. Only enemy agents have awareness during infiltration phase. Right, first we need to grab the documents. Let's do exactly that. And call the evac. A lot of the time you can choose between more than one evac zone, but in the tutorial there's just one, right here. And you can see that we got two rounds until evac arrives. Which means we'll have to handle some enemies. Evac will take two turns to arrive, set up Overwatch to guard the room. Now, unlike in XCOM, in this game Overwatch is always directional. Or more specifically, you can use kind of short range Overwatch, which will be all around you, or long range Overwatch, which will be a cone. So this guy can Overwatch all around him in short range, like this. And the other guy can overwatch a cone area outside of the building. Here. So it's a little bit different than in XCOM. There's more micromanagement involved with overwatch. And actual decisions how you want to overwatch. Here comes the first guy. He's about to have a bad time. And he's dead. And another one. He is also dead. 
jump out of the window and take cover. So in Phantom Doctrine, cover doesn't reduce the chance of you being hit, it reduces the damage you take. There's no chance to hit the enemy in the sense it exists in XCOM in Phantom Doctrine, as you probably figured out by now. For one FP and one AP you can use full auto attack which will suppress the enemy practically removing their awareness. So that's one of the actions that requires both a movement point and a fire point. Or rather action point, not movement point. And that will kill him by the way. Damage versus awareness. Phantom Doctrine has no chance to hit, like I mentioned just a moment ago, but attacks can deal varying amounts of damage presented as follows. Maximum damage and minimum damage. Targets automatically dodge incoming attacks provided they aren't at point blank range. Dodging cost awareness. So if your enemy or you have enough awareness, they or you will dodge automatically. A dodged attack deals minimum damage, otherwise maximum damage. Damage is further reduced by target armor and cover. Note, in infiltration and at the beginning of combat enemy awareness is always at zero, except for enemy agents who always start with full awareness. So generally speaking enemy agents are more dangerous than regular enemies. Let's put it that way. So now we can move down here into full cover. And there will be another guy. Some weapons are accurate enough to land devastating headshots, but cost awareness. So that's one such weapon, and we got a headshot ability. The abilities are down here by the way, but they are locked out because this is the tutorial. And at the cost of 70 awareness, which is quite a lot, as you can see this guy has 80 awareness total, at the cost of 70 awareness we can use a headshot, which will do up to 95 damage maximum, and he's dead. Now we can end our turn. And that's basically the tutorial. It's not very long and not super complicated, but there's a lot more to this game than that. This just shows the absolute basics of tactical missions. Here's our evac. Now the evac will not stay there forever, or rather it will be compromised after a few turns, which gives you a penalty on the strategic layer. More on that later, maybe. It's not really relevant right now. So we go into the evac zone and we can leave. And now we can evacuate. Off we go. You have reached the end of the tutorial, right, like I said, the tutorial is not very long. So now we get to do another mission immediately, however, now I will be loading the save that was provided to me. So we'll jump into another mission, which takes place further into the campaign. This one will be a pure combat mission, so see you in a moment. So here's the mission we'll be doing, Scorched Earth in Beirut. And our objective is to destroy evidence of the Beirut station and evacuate any remaining personnel. This will be basically a pure combat mission, no infiltration here. And here's our team, we got six operatives. Let's take a look around. So first we have to destroy evidence of the Beirut station, up here, on the second floor, on the first floor. Alright, let's get moving. And we can check our gear. Let's see what we have. Especially equipment. We got a first aid kit and a smoke grenade on this guy. We got focus, which regenerates this character's awareness. That can be quite useful. Stabilize, pick up agent, take down. That just incapacitates the target. Improve this character's awareness regeneration by 40 per turn, last 3 turns. Yep, that's not too bad. Quite useful. 
Next up... What do we have here? We got a frag grenade and first aid kit, nice one. Focus, so regenerate this character's awareness. Stabilizes an agent in critical condition. Heartbeat sensor, reveal enemies in the area of effect without having line of sight to them. I like that. But we don't need that to reveal enemies. We already know there are a few on the left side. Let's see if we can handle them, maybe. So... Where can we go? Over here, that's full cover. What do you have? Stabilize, focus, take down, warn ally. Instantly restore 100 awareness to an allied character. This will be quite useful with abilities like headshot, which takes a lot of awareness. He also has a smoke grenade and a booster. Significantly increases movement rate for a short time. All right. So let's move into cover and take a shot, shall we? We should be able to kill some of them. We don't have to worry about being revealed because this is not an infiltration phase. And there's one guy inside the building. Okay. So... We could use headshot right away. Which will kill him. A regular attack will not. Fully maximum damage. Okay. We got quite a few enemies around here. There's one guy all the way in the back. There's also an enemy agent right here. Yep, that's an agent. He has a different icon, as you can see. Before we take this shot, let's use the others. That is quite a few enemies. We still got a little bit of full cover around here. We should kill the guys on the left, because they can flank us quite easily. That should be the priority, no doubt. And maybe this guy inside the building. I don't want any nasty surprises from him. Okay, we can kill one of these guys, guaranteed. Now, they do not have any awareness, so we don't have to worry about them dodging. They cannot dodge. Let's move a little bit closer. Okay, yeah, this looks good. We can kill that person all the way in the back. We could also shoot the agent, but the agent starts with full awareness. Which means she will dodge, and will only do 12 damage. I'd rather kill all the regular dudes down here. Yeah, let's kill that guy in the back, because not all weapons have range this good. That's one down. We still got some more people back here. Now, I don't like having cover, obviously. Yeah, let's move into full cover with fast ball. And we could use headshot on this fella. Yep, sounds good to me. Headshot on this guy. That will kill him. Then we can use headshot with who was it again? This guy. So headshot on one of these. It's a shame I can't do 45 damage to that guy in the back. That would be nice. But alas. Not going to happen. Durand. We need to kill these two guys, which should be doable just fine. And into cover preferably. We can move into partial cover. Or into full cover on the left. We should have line of sight from over here. I don't want that agent on the high ground to hit us too much. So, let's go with headshot. Yup. This does use a lot of awareness, but in this case, I would say it's worth it. And one more headshot. I can't kill that person in the back, unfortunately. Here, nice. That was quite a few kills on the first turn. And we still got Canasta and Deadpan. We are too far away to shoot the agent. We can, however, use Overwatch. That's a possibility. She also has a short shot ability. The next shot from this character cannot be dodged by the target. Oh, that's very nice. That is very nice. Okay. And Exertion, what's that? 
Improve the movement range of this character by 2 per AP. Last 2 turns. Alright, let's actually use Overwatch. Right here. In this general direction. We have a very large cone. In case more enemies show up. In this general area. Excellent. Yep, sounds good to me. And deadpan. Same story, Overwatch into the building. In case someone shows up. Or Overwatch around him. Here. As long as you're not trying to overwatch long range, the area will be around you, not in a cone. So we can do it like this. Here. So he will overwatch everything around him. And that's the end of our turn. Let's see what's going to happen. I assume that agent will start shooting us. We do have at least one frag grenade. Might be nice against the agent in the back. Yep, 18 damage. Okay. So now we can see that this guy is starting to get awareness. That's the second small bar under his head. And shield has none left. Because he's getting shot at. Okay then. Let's see. Smoke grenade, booster. Now he did regain some awareness. He also has focus, so I'm going to use focus, I think. Yep, let's use focus. That will use one fire point, which means he will not be able to fire on this turn. But that's okay, he can still move. We can move towards that building. Do we have to go through here? I think so. There are stairs over there. Yeah, I think we need to go this way. Alright. What about the dead pan? I think I'll send him into the building. To take care of the actual objective. Yep, sounds good to me. Somebody has to go here. Might as well be him. But where exactly are the stairs? Over here, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the stairs are right here. Yup. Okay, so up we go. No, that used both his actions. I mean, both his movement points. We can use Overwatch to avoid any nasty surprises. Here, that will do. Now, what about that agent? That might be slightly complicated to deal with. She's a little bit far away. We need to get closer. And we need to kill the guys inside the building so let's see let's move into the building ourselves i'm going to ignore that agent for now here we got one guy in full cover flashbang first aid kit so flashbang will reduce awareness we don't need that right now let's see he does have some awareness i don't think he's going to dodge though We don't know for sure. But let's take that shot. Here, 15 damage. Defense bonus on injury, alright. Now he has 30 left. I can flank him technically, but that will be bad for our health. Because I will be a little bit too exposed for my taste. Let's see. Might be a good idea to stay in full cover with that agent on the high ground. Yep. We can go left with one person. Not a bad idea. Into the building on the left. And open the door. Okay, and we can take a shot at that agent. It won't do a whole lot, but it will drain some of her awareness. Might as well do that. Here, as you can see, it drained some of her awareness. She will regenerate it. So we need to keep doing it. Otherwise that was a pointless waste of ammunition. Now how about we try to kill this fella. I can move closer but I think I'd rather keep my full cover. 
Although, I'm not sure if we'll have line of sight from here. We might not. Interesting. Yeah, not sure about this. Fastball, get over here. We do have line of sight. So, we can use headshot. No, not enough awareness. Okay. We do have worn ally, which instantly restores 100 awareness. That's a thing that we can do. And then we can use headshot. Might be a bit of a waste of that particular ability. This guy has no awareness left, which means we will still do 14 damage, guaranteed. I just need one more person to take a shot at him. I'm not entirely convinced using partial cover is a good idea. I'll be honest. But alright, let's do it. Oh, we don't have line of sight to these two guys. Come on. Yeah, we don't. I thought we'll be able to shoot him through the window. But no. Well then, let's take that shot, shall we? It will do 14 damage. There. He's down to 16. Can we do 16? We can still move one more time. I'm just not sure if we can get line of sight to him. We should be able to get line of sight from over here, because we'll be right next to the window. No. Well, never mind. We can still use Overwatch, however. If he tries to move towards us, we will get a shot. Yep, let's do it like this. If he tries to move towards us, we'll get a shot. Sounds good to me. And that's basically our turn done. I'm not overly happy about that turn, but oh well. It will do. Down goes our awareness. Will he move? They can't actually see him. Okay, they did not move. He will go down on this turn. And here's another guy. That guy is a little bit far away. Alright, let's keep moving. Get to our actual objective. Here we are. We can grab that on the next turn. Do we really need the second guy over here? Because I'm thinking maybe not so much. No, probably not. I think I'm going to use Worn Ally in this situation. 14. Okay. What does he have? Focus? Let him use Focus. Here, back to full. And then... We can get a nice flanking shot. This will almost certainly be a kill. Yeah, it will be a kill for sure. No question about that. Because remember, cover reduces the damage. Yep, it will be a kill. He doesn't have the awareness, right? Well, he has some. I'm pretty sure that's not enough to dodge. I hope I'm not wrong about that. Here, bye-bye. Now we got one more guy outside, one guy all the way back on the high ground, and that agent. I'm probably going to throw a grenade at that agent, but we'll see about that. So technically I can flank this guy, but that is not a very good idea. I don't think so. What do we do here? Shield into full cover. He does have full awareness. He'll be fine. We can still take a shot at that agent. She doesn't have full awareness. Oh no, we are too far away. No, target's damage threshold is too high. It would be 0-0. Zero, zero. I could still headshot, but that would be a massive waste. Let's overwatch instead. Probably won't achieve much, but it doesn't really cost us anything. Now, this guy. Not enough fire points, right, we used fire point to restore 
our focus. Yeah. We still got drowned on the left side. What's his effective range? It's pretty good. Oh, he can do a lot of damage to that agent because he's flanking the agent. Yeah, we should definitely do that. Can we reduce that agent's awareness to do maximum damage? We can. Yeah, I think we should just ignore this dude. And focus on the agent. That's what I'm thinking. Sounds good, let's do that then. But I'll move into full cover. We should still be in range. Okay, let's take that shot. So, she has full cover from this direction, which is why this is red. But we'll still do damage and we'll still drain her awareness to zero. And now we can take that flanking shot. Right here, and we'll do 72 damage. Won't be quite enough to kill her, but she has 111 health total, that's a lot of health. Let's go for it. There, 72 damage, nice. That's so good. Alright. We still got Canasta. Right, no fire points on this guy. Deadpan. Oh, Deadpan actually has line of sight from all the way up here. Interesting. We can do 15. Yeah, worth it, I think. Uh, not enough action points for full auto, but we can use Burst for 11 damage. Might as well do that, let's do it. We know she has zero awareness, so we might as well take advantage of that. And then... I think that's pretty much it. Right, that's pretty much it, but we can still move if we want to. Yeah, let's move like this, so that we'll have cover from this direction. And I think Fastball can stay where he is, in full cover that is. Yep, sounds good to me, you can stay where you are. Any abilities we can use? Not really, we can reload. No, that requires fire points. Alright, that will be the end of our turn then. We should be able to kill the agent on the next turn. She's down to 23. But that's the single most dangerous enemy around here. Okay. We might want to use a first aid kit. Right about now. This would be a lot more damage if we weren't in full cover, by the way. Since cover is just straight up damage reduction. Here, we destroyed the evidence. So now Deadpan can go make himself useful. He should be able to take a shot through the window. Yep. Here, okay, yep, he can take a shot. Not full auto, but burst is good enough. We can straight up kill this guy. Well, no, he might dodge this. Okay. I think he will dodge this. But let's take that shot anyway. Yeah, he had full awareness, so he did dodge. But that was still 33 damage. One crappy shot will kill him for sure. And... We still got that guy all the way up. 18 damage. We need to kill that agent. That's the priority right now. I really want to do that. Okay, hold on. How much can you do? He can't finish him off, unfortunately. Nope. How's his health? 22 health. Yeah, that's not great. He does have a first aid kit, but that will use a fire point. I don't necessarily want that. We also have shield. Let's try from over here. 
11 damage. Damn it, one damage short. Are you serious right now? What the heck? Okay, well, let's take that shot anyway. We'll just need one more damage. And he will go down. So, any sort of damage. With a crappy pistol. Fastball has 62 health. He should be fine. Okay, I'm not entirely sure if we'll have line of sight from the left side. We should have line of sight from here. Through the window. Yep. Okay, that will kill him with the pistol. Bye bye. And now we can try to take care of the agent. Can we actually finish off the agent? Good question. I certainly hope so. But need to remember about this fella up here. So hold on, we can just sprint all the way. He can't jump down from up there. There is a ladder on the left. But I think it's best if we just sprint all the way. Seems reasonable. Then we can take a shot. Anything other than full auto. So yeah, that will be enough damage. That will be more than enough damage. We don't even have to use the ammunition. We can use the pistol. That will be a kill too. There's no way this is enough awareness to dodge. So let's do that. Here, she's dead. Nice. We got rid of the agent. Now we do have some reinforcements incoming. That might be interesting. Let's use that medkit, shall we? Yep, let's do that. 22 health is not exactly amazing. That's plus 60. So he's not even at full health yet. And then we'll use Overwatch, I guess. Uh, oh no, we can't use Overwatch. Right, never mind. Maybe move into the building. And full cover. As for this guy... We can move. And I'm thinking Overwatch. Something like this. I'm not sure where the reinforcements will arrive. So let's do it like this. In case they pop up somewhere close to us. Alright then. Reinforcements arriving. We dodged. Since he had full awareness. Oh yeah, they are right behind us. Well, there we go, we killed one. Good job, Durand. How, long till you back How many enemies are we talking about here? Okay, quite a few. I think we'll just move away from them. Where's the evac anyway? Oh, it's up here. Yeah, we are just going to move away from them. But we still got this fella up here. We need to take care of him. So... Hold on. I can flank him easily. But first, we what need to reduce his awareness. Let's maybe do that. Look at this range, it's pretty crazy. Alright, hold on. Down here. That seems reasonable. I still want to keep some cover. There, now we can take a shot. He will dodge this one. But we can do 15. The problem is that some of these weapons require two action points to reload. Which means... You shouldn't always fire them. If you can get the job done with the pistol, then it's better to get the job done with the pistol. Alright, let's go up here and then we'll just shoot him. Yep, sounds good to me. Maybe we can just do it with one shot. Let's find out. What do you know about yeah, we can just kill him like this, no problem whatsoever. He has 45 health. This will kill him, so bye bye. You can't dodge from point blank range. 
so there's that. Okay. Now. Who's where? We might want to move Durand. Partial cover. We can move into the building. No, not quite. Might not be a bad idea to kill some of these dudes. Does he have a grenade? Yes, he actually does have a grenade. So I could just throw a grenade and kill at least two of them. I don't think I can get all three. No. But I can kill two of them easily. Just sucks that we can't get all three. If I move slightly to the side, then I will be able to get all three. But I want to move after throwing the grenade. So you know what, let's throw the grenade and then we'll move. Okay, go for it. This is a granted kill. On both. Dodge this. Okay. Oh yeah, he can't move anymore, right. That's fine. What about that last fella? We might still be able to handle him. Just need to get line of sight to him. I think we can do it. Burst. 17 damage. 22 damage. Okay, let's go for it. He has 23 left. We just need one more person to get line of sight. Or we can just finish him off on the next turn. He won't be able to kill anyone. He can't do that much damage. We'll be fine. Oh, and there's an earth strike incoming. Okay. I don't like the sound of that. Okay, Overwatch. In this direction. Right. In yeah. case he tries to move. Durand. Let's maybe set up on the high ground. About you. Shield. Do you have a medkit? No, he has a smoke grenade and a booster. Alright then. Good for you. Overwatch, just in case there's some funny business. As for Deadpan. He can't move anymore, but he can still overwatch. In this general direction. Okay, sure. And that's the end of our turn. And there's the overwatch shot. We did 11 damage. Nice. Okay, that was a little bit more than I thought it would be, but he managed to flank us. Okay, that was my bad. We should have killed him. I could have moved and killed all three with a grenade, I think. I'm pretty sure that would have been possible. Well, in any case, let's kill him now, shall we? I don't think he can dodge this. There, he's down. And we need a reload. But I can't reload anymore. Actually, yes, I can. It'll use both action points. But fine. Alright, let's move on. We still got a frag grenade. That will definitely come in handy. Alright, let's go. I don't like the sound of that earth strike. Not one bit. And we should probably call Evac by now. So let's do that. Two turns. Alright, let's go everyone. Overwatch, just in case. Maybe we should reload. Yeah, let's take the time to reload. Back to full. And then we can overwatch. Maybe in this direction. Okay. Sounds good to me. Overwatch on deadpan. And we can still move. Just run all the way. Yep. Can we not use the ladder? He should be able to use the ladder. Alright, overwatch. 
just around him. I'm here. Good enough. Let's do this. And 17 out of 20. Alright, Overwatch, just in case someone shows up. I don't think so, but you never know. Okay, we are fine. From the looks of it. One turn to Evac. Yeah, we can go up. Let's do that then. Up you go. Durand is a little bit behind, but he'll catch up. We will not leave before the Earth Strike. I'm not sure how much of a problem that's going to be. I suppose we'll find out. Hopefully not the hard way. Alright then. Who else can still move? You can't move anymore. Fastball can move. Up you go then. Alright, that will do. No reinforcements incoming, so I suppose there's no need to overwatch. But I'll still overwatch once or twice. Just in case something actually happens. Here, in the other direction. And Fastball can also overwatch. Okay, yeah, that will be good enough. Here comes the Earth Strike, I think. Yep. So, how does that work exactly? Here's our evac. I'm here. Strike duration, two turns. Oh, there's the strike. Will it follow us? I don't know, let's find out. First, let's get up here. I can't quite evac on this turn. No, I can evac on the next one. Well, alright then. No, it will stay there. Alright, let's get the heck out of here on the next turn. Or we can leave that guy behind. <laughs> Sorry, bro. You're too slow. Nah, we'll wait for him. It's fine. And we're out. Everyone is here. And that's the mission done. We evacuated our team. Now we'll get some stats. Off we go. Before the Earth Strike. Mission results success. So, that's also going to be the end of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. It's a pretty interesting game so far. I will do a proper campaign once the game is either released or closer to release. But for now, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did, or a dislike if you didn't. And let me know what you think about Phantom Doctrine. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.